YouTube is Marvin here. Welcome to my channel. And today's video is about my daily driver, 2006 Mazda 5. See, it's developed like a like a rough idle issue, which is the common problem with Mazda 5. And the Mazda 5 actually has a bulletin about it. And uh, it's uh, the bulletin is like to clean the throttle body, which is I did, and it didn't solve the issue at all. And uh, I also uh, checked uh, my spark plug and replaced all the spark plug which is like even after I check it it was okay but I just thought to replace it because I already removed them still didn't solve the issue I've been searching information online you know from fellow youtubers if uh, what exactly wrong with it and then there's a uh, uh, one youtuber that uh, I've watched I have a problem actually is the GR valve that's what he replaced and removed and I watched him how he removed it like the uh, technique that he did and uh, it happens that the guy has like the extension I'll show it here like this that comes with his uh, toolkit that has like a deeper notch in here and when you put the socket he was able to tilt it to certain degrees that and he was able to remove the bolt that's holding the EGR valve and so what that guy did actually he removed the EGR valve and clean it and put it back and it's uh, solved this issue but uh, considering you know the amount of like difficulty that you have to put to remove that gear valve and it's not that expensive anyway so in my case I'm gonna replace it with a new one this is the brand new GR valve that I got from Rock Auto USA and it comes with a magnetic sticker for the fridge right there as you can see right here I paid 3379 US and plus uh, shipping plus $16 shipping and it uh, comes out for like around $68 Canadian after conversion and that's like uh, including the uh, import fees or whatever including everything it's shipped to my door I didn't pay any extra when uh, it gets shipped to my door all right so let's open the new EGR valve Right, so it comes with a metal gasket and nothing else. I think the actual GR valve itself. Right, so it's assembly, comes with a solenoid uh, installed, and as you can see right there, it's very clean, really brand new. All right, so we're gonna start removing the engine cover and then next is the filter assembly. Uh, so by just remove this, by just pulling it upwards. There we go. Side. And we have to, next one we have to remove this. And there's one plastic screw that you have to remove I believe this one or two. Oh not this one. Okay. There you go, make sure not to lose the screws. By the way, I put a screw right here because I, break, I broke the tab of the uh, battery cover. So I kind of modified it because it was rattling. Uh, I'm gonna it this way. Like that. I'm gonna put the screw back here so that I won't lose it. So this is the plastic uh, screw that you have to remove. I'm just going to put it back here as well. So that later on I don't have to look for them. It's right there. So that's the next thing you have to remove. Alright, so the next thing we have to remove is, to have, is this uh, air filter assembly. So what we have to do is to loosen this uh, can you see that loosen this screw here the clamp screw that hold this uh, rubber hose and then we have to 
remove this as well by pulling this down and pushing it up I cannot do it with one hand and also this one here the connector we have to remove that I don't know okay, let's remove it if I can remove it with one hand just have to push this down here there you go let's remove and uh, another one you have to remove is this rubber here there are sorry it's sunny right now so let's remove this one now this is the one holding the assembly make sure not to lose it All right so the next thing we have to remove is this thing here it's supposed to be All right, it's gonna be really hard for me to remove with one hand so the next thing we have to remove this and this and then you can pull this uh, whole assembly out and I believe that's it so I know some people like they open this you know the top and then remove that first before removing the bottom but you don't have to but uh, I guess the reason that why they're doing that so that they can clean the air filter as well but I mean you can do that later you can remove the whole assembly and you know clean that later before uh, putting it back now I'm gonna put the camera my cell phone on the tripod and then uh, we can remove this uh, uh, hose here and the believe the hose yeah and the uh, clamp here all right so what i have to do is to push this all the way and then you can see it on the side here you can help it to push that lock and there you go see this is the lock that you have to push it down yeah you can squeeze it like that and this one will uh, you can remove this one here so i forgot this rubber here i have to make sure that one for i won't lose it and the next thing is the rubber hose clamp you just have to loosen it Let's see. and then slowly there you go it's come off and i should be able to pull the whole assembly out make sure you remove this connector you don't want to break that and the rubber right here this is gonna be kind of a stiff when pulling it out but there we go All right so as you can see you can remove the whole air filter assembly and this is the only thing that attached to the bottom the plastic downpipe and i don't know if you guys can see the air filter inside which i'm gonna clean or replace it later on before putting it back Right, so. okay so as you can see here that I have lots of room to work to re try to remove the EGR assembly uh, the EGR valve assembly is right here as you can see. and what you have to do is to remove the connector here okay I'm gonna try and remove it right now no and also I removed this plastic uh, tie down I was I was gonna cut it because it was really difficult to remove all you have to do is you can see the inside you just have to squeeze that and pull it out because it was mounted to this bolt right here anyway so I think this is gonna help me to access the if I need to move this wire to access the uh, EGR valve yeah so what I did is I covered the opening of the throttle body just to make sure no dirt is gonna go in there and then now I have I'm going to try to remove the connector for the EGR solenoid so you just have to press this down there you go it came off and that's the connector and that is the connector from the solenoid right there okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove uh, the coolant hose you can see right there this is the big one from here it's gonna go there gonna the reason why I have to remove this because it's blocking the uh, the bolt that holding the uh, EGR valve so there is there's only two bolts that holding the EGR valve the, another thing that I have to remove actually I have still have to remove the small hose here that's attached to the EGR valve but first thing I'm gonna remove the big hose first so expect that the coolant is gonna spill 
after removing that so make sure that you have a uh, container underneath and then make sure that you have to hose it down all the remaining coolant that uh, is spilled on your driveway, driveway because it's gonna be poisonous for the pets like cats and the uh, dog and it's uh, coolant is a uh, they sweet so they like uh, you know dogs and cats might uh, lick it and then they're gonna get poisoned right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove the big hose so that I can have access to the two bolts that's holding the GR valve assembly So uh, the best tool for this is the adjustable pliers like the one that I have here and now expect that the coolant is gonna spill and if this, this is too cold like if it's too hard to remove you can use a heat gun heat it up a little bit and then it will come off like right now it's cold so I think I have to use the heat gun oh it's okay you can see the coolant is already coming out. I'm gonna use two hands to do that. If I can take this off, I have to use the heat gun to make the rubber softer and more flexible so that I can pull it out. Kind of coming out like so. Yeah. All right. So I don't know if you can see that, but. See that? Lots of. The Coolant is coming out and it just like ruined my gloves right there. <laughs> so just make sure not to touch the coolant, it's gonna irritate your skin as well. So another uh, rubber hose that I need to remove is this here that's attached to the uh, assembly, the EGR assembly. So I can just move this forward and uh, get that alright All right, so what I did here I just used this uh, uh, screwdriver and just push this down the small holes down That they said if the rubber is so hard, you just have, you can heat it up with a heat gun. There you go. So I don't think that I have to remove the other end. This you can just gonna stay there. Push that. This is the bolt that we're trying to get. This one here, and there's another one right there. I think this one here is not the problem. The problem is this one here. Alright, right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the solenoid of the EGR valve instead of removing them together. So this is just four screw here. Okay, be careful not to strip them. This one is hard. Okay. Okay, let me do it with two hands. As you can see right there, I kind of strip the ones, uh, one screw and uh, it doesn't come off. So I have to remove this one here to the uh, plastic holder so that I can push this away 
but this one here this connector here is blocking uh, my access into that screw because I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, side cutter and then kind of like pinch it and then try to turn it if I that one will work so I'm going to try to remove this bolt so that I can put this connector out of the way and then I can have like room here to use this side cutter to try to turn that uh, uh, screw All right so I got a number 8 socket here Oh, that's off. That's the good news. It should come off. I think this is the oil sensor. Oil pressure sensor, I don't know, I'm not sure. Just make sure not to get it dirty. So now I have room to access the stubborn screw. Oh, there we go. It clicks. All right, it clicks, it works. All right, so all the screws removed. As you can see, like it's better uh, to use the magnetic screwdriver. So like, uh, just uh, also make sure that your magnetic screwdriver is really strong enough to, you know, hold the screw, not to drop uh, uh, the screw. So yeah, so the solenoid should come off now easily. There you go. Alright, so that's the solenoid assembly and I got like six pins connector right there. Let's put this away. Alright, so the bolt is uh, socket number 10 and I'm using the small uh, uh, ratchet wrench. Alright, so I'm gonna push this here on the socket like this, make sure it's secure. And hopefully this is this will work. There we go. All right, it's in. <clears throat> I'm just gonna show you guys. Let's make it clear. As you can see, I hear my socket is already in. So like. Uh, what I did is like I position my socket like the socket is facing that way and then insert it between the uh, EGR valve and this uh, uh, rubber pipe uh, connector and then it's facing that way and then you have to turn it to the left and then uh, point it to the uh, bolt and then try to like uh, put it in the bolt and then it will fit like that so now that's the reason why I have removed the solenoid because if I have the solenoid right here I there's no way for me to uh, move the ratchet uh, towards me because it's gonna hit the solenoid so let's see hopefully the bolt is not that you know like hard to move. see it's quite If it's really hard, I think there's another way to do that. You can put the extension. Oh, there you go. It clicks. It clicks. Oh, there you go. The bolt's loosened. All right. Let's just make sure not to drop anything. I'm gonna. If I can use my hand now. Alright, so again, I position my, I position the socket like this and insert it between the EGR valve and the 
uh, rubber pipe connector. Once it's inserted, you can twist it like that, turn it to the left, and then try to put it on the bolt. Right. Right. So I'm gonna try to use this extension, screwdriver extension. Yeah. Just to turn it slowly. You want to drop the bolt? All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this cloth just to make sure that I'm not gonna drop the bolt somewhere. Right, so as you can see right there, in case I drop the bolt, I am hoping that the this piece, this cloth is gonna catch it. Right, so let's do that. Right, so I loosen the bolt all the way using the number 10 socket and the screwdriver extension. And after that, I just have to use my hand to pull it out. Yeah, so putting it back later on, I'm gonna use the same technique. I'm gonna put the drug there just to make sure if in case I drop the bolt. All right, so the front one is not that hard. You just have to move this away and then you can position your uh, socket right there, number 10. And then just make sure not to Alright, so it's quite tight for me to like uh, pull it towards me. So I'm gonna use this uh, close wrench and then put it here so that I have like uh, more leverage. But I'm gonna do it with two hands supporting the wrench to uh, stay straight because I don't wanna I don't wanna strip the the bolt. So. Oh. There I go. Right, so how it is, you pull it like that. And I'm gonna use this again. So it's quite easy to twist. Right, so another thing that to keep in mind is like this bolt actually, the front bolt, is also holding this. I think it's just a bracket for the wire. Right there. Right, so the bracket is sitting like that, right there, as it goes to the uh, front bolt. Okay, let's put this away, and the, there you go, as you can see, the GR bolt already dropped. Hopefully we can remove it easily, I think so. See. It's another thing if I have the if the solenoid is still there I think it's gonna be like quite hard to take it out there we go right all right so I got so excited after removing that EGR valve assembly and the, I remember I said wait how about the gasket hopefully it's still there and yeah it's actually dropped as well as you can see right there so, yeah, so now I got it. Should be good. All right, guys. So I just do. I just want to do the comparison between the old one and the new one. As you can see right here, it's the old one, new one, of course. And then this is the solenoid and the the old uh, metal gasket. So obviously, I'm gonna use the new one. And uh, before that, I just want to show you here. Uh, the reason why that I take this off is, and this is the bolt that hold the uh, EGR valve assembly. So the 
most difficult one to access is the one at the back so as you can see here so if I put my socket here if I will able to put that there's no way for me to uh, pull the uh, ratchet towards me to loosen it because it's this thing is on the way even uh, saying that probably even I want to position my socket it's gonna be hard for me too because this is on the way so because what I did here is let's do the old one I went like this and on the right side is the uh, rubber hose connector so I just I went like that and then turn it like that to the left and then position it to the bolt and I have room to like uh, pull the ratchet to loosen it right so let's go to the comparison anyway so that's this is the old one as you can see it's quite dirty inside but I don't really see anything that is blocking that hole see use the flashlight right there see right there it's still clear and uh, all right so I got my headlight on so it's, I think it's better for you guys to see you can see right there it's freely and I can feel that the spring is still uh, strong enough to move this open and close and uh, yeah so uh, so the guy has sprayed like a brake cleaner to clean this up but I think the main thing that you have to clean here if you don't want to replace it is this like a metal tube here all right so the the best way to clean this if you have an air compressor and then you get like the nozzle with the rubber tip if you don't have the rubber tip you can just wrap it with the electrical tape and then it will serve as a seal and then you can just put it here and you know spray the uh, air make sure that it's not facing towards you like that because the, the air is going to come out here all the debris is going to come out here it's going to be on your eyes on your face so make sure it's facing it away from you and uh, do like this yeah, i'm gonna clean it but i uh, i have the new one so i'm not gonna uh, clean it right now i'll clean it after just to you know i'm still gonna keep this uh, old one especially the uh, solenoid if the solenoid is uh, still good anyway if you guys don't want to see this part you guys just kind of skip it but what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna i have my multimeter and I'm just gonna try to, you know, like compare the six pins. If uh, there's a big difference, if there's a big difference, it means the solenoid has issue. But if not, it should be okay. Okay, so I got my multimeter set it to uh, uh, ohms, and I'm just gonna do a quick uh, uh, testing of the pins. If what we can get right here, so like. I'm gonna start right here. The second one shows like 13.9. Now we're gonna move it to the third one. It's 27.5. Let's compare it to the old one. So that's 13.9 right here. This is 14.2. 14.1 is only 0.2 difference. And 27.9, 27.8, I can't remember what is the other one. Let's see again. 27.6, so that seems to me that's the tolerance right there. But that seems to me that those pins are okay. Okay, so the other one here, the bottom one is 13.9, and let's do it one by one. 13.6, so that's still pretty close. Then I move it to the third one, 27.6 and 27.21. So yeah, so like there's no big difference. So it means I would say that the, uh, let's reverse it. I would say that the solenoid is still okay. 13.9, the same thing. The solenoid, the inside of it is just coil. 
So yeah, I would say that the solenoid is still okay. So again, I'm gonna keep the old one, I'm gonna clean it up and just keep it just in case as long as I have my Mazda 5. Yeah, so I think it's time for me to install the new one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna remove the solenoid before installing the GR valve assembly so that I can have access to that bolt. This one is quite soft because it's a new one. Yeah, and hopefully this is gonna solve that uh, uh, rough idle issue and stalling uh, on the red light. And if it doesn't solve it, I don't know, that's gonna be another challenge for me. Anyway, just uh, this video is just to show you guys how to replace the EGR valve. So I'm not a mechanic, I uh, just do DIY for my cars and everything if I could. And uh, so when I started having that issue, the uh, rough idle and stalling on the red light, I got the, I used my error code, uh, my code reader to you get the error code and I got the 0401. And uh, according to Master 5, they, uh, you have to clean the throttle body. As I mentioned, that it didn't help. And uh, I searched on YouTube if uh, what's the possible cause. And uh, yeah, I found this YouTuber. Actually, I remember his name is the pho uh, Photo Mike uh, Garage. Uh, shout out to him. And uh, yeah, he replaced the EGR valve and uh, he said that it fixed the issue. So again, it's the EGR valve is not that expensive. So I bought a new one and then I thought to give it a try. Right guys, so I think it's time to install the new EGR valve. Alright, so new EGR valve and new gasket goes like that. Right, and uh, what I'm gonna do is gonna install the front bolt first, the one with the uh, metal bracket. And it goes, goes like that. Right, so the good thing with this uh, gasket is the bolt actually holding it like that. So yeah, let's see if uh, we can install it easily. It's a bit tight. All right, it's not that easy, but uh, it's not that hard either. So, okay, I'm gonna use this again. gonna tighten it just tight enough to I mean just to snug it all right so this time I'm gonna use this just to catch the bolt in case I drop it Right, the challenge that you're gonna have for the uh, back bolt is to align the metal gasket in the hole. But everything you have to do is you have to be patient. Otherwise, all right. So, was able to 
put it back in but it wasn't that easy as you can see right there it's not tightened yet but now it's in position and I just use my fingers just to uh, turn uh, the bolt uh, clockwise just to you know get the as tight as I can alright so how did I align it is first I put this uh, uh, metal gasket right and then put the bolt first at the front right there and then tighten it tighten it with my hand and uh, tight it like just a snag so that it won't like uh, you can still I mean you can still move the uh, EGR valve like uh, up and down so the problem now for this uh, back bolt is like to align this uh, hole to the hole where you're gonna mount it also to align this uh, 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 gasket you know like it's gonna move like that took me a while to figure out how to do it I tried so many times to putting the bolts in it doesn't get through and what I did is like I put my hand at the bottom here and you can feel this part right here the bottom so once you feel that you can also feel the uh, the gasket and then you just have to make sure that it's, uh, it's like sitting on your uh, finger and then it's once it's sitting like that see that hole is aligned right there two holes aligned as you can see my finger here the bottom you can I can still feel the bottom of the EGR valve also I can feel the bottom of the gasket so once that it's sitting there so the gasket in the hole is aligned you just have to position the EGR valve evenly and then you can put the bolt and I just use my left hand to put the bolt like that and then keep pushing it pushing it and then keep a little bit moving here while holding uh, the bottom firmly and then I was able to put it in and then as soon as I feel that it goes in I just slowly turn turn it with my fingers and then I use my right hand to like a snug tight it all right so hopefully that's gonna work for you guys it works for me yeah so it uh, quite uh, you know it takes time for me to figure out how to align it all right so the same thing you're gonna position the socket like this and then uh, put it in between the EGR valve and the hose rubber hose connector and you turn it to the left and I still have my rub right here in case I drop the socket hopefully you guys can see this like that help me two hand and there you go okay that's tight i don't think that you really need to tighten it too much but like that Okay, that's tight enough. And I'm gonna do the I need extension for the front bolt. As I said the front bolt is uh, you get an easy access here. Again, don't tight it too much. Oops want to drop anything there you go all right so i'm going to put everything back i'm going to start with a small hose that uh, connected to the egr valve and uh, yeah so i'm going to use these two adjustable uh, flyers so let's put the small hose back first all right so the small hose rubber hose is uh, installed to the egr valve so what i'm trying to do when i put the clamp back i always just uh, try to put it like the way the, to the markings the way it was so I think it's gonna seal it properly so now it's time for me to install the let's see if we forget anything we didn't forget anything so it's time for me to install the whole big hose yes. like that there you go
All right, so it's time to install the new solenoid on top of the uh, EGR valve and uh, make sure to use the proper size of the screwdriver so that you won't strip the uh, screw just like what I did earlier. And I have two screwdriver here, which is exactly the same size. But the thing is, this is old one that have been used like for many years. And this is a new one and it's still, uh, it makes a big difference when you put it in so see it kind of loose and this one is really fit perfectly so i'm gonna use the new one the new screwdriver i don't want to strip the bolt again all right let's do it again i'm gonna use this to patch anything just in case probably if i drop anything hopefully it will patch it Okay, so solenoid and EGR valve assembly uh, installed. So don't forget to put the connector back for the solenoid. And now I think it's time to put the bolt on the oil uh, pressure sensor. I believe it is. And that is, I'm gonna need a number eight uh, socket to tighten this in. Alright, so I'm gonna put everything back and it should be good to go and hopefully the car still starts and uh, I mean the main thing is that hopefully it will solve the issue the uh, rough idle issue installing on the red light and uh, well, well I will see and don't forget that <laughs> the towel here so you don't wanna leave it there and then I'm gonna <laughs> you're gonna cause lots of issues All right so it's time to install the uh, air filter assembly earlier it's very easy to remove it because you just have to pull it up but now putting it back is quite uh, different because it has like this is the mounting uh, hook right here you have to align that that and another one here that's quite easy to align but the problem is you have to align this uh, intake here hole to the hose uh, at the bottom so that's going to be aligned and that's going to be hard to align three things at the same time so the easy way to put it back is to of course open it open the top and then remove the uh, top and the filter right so remove the filter and then now you can see the hole and then you can align it easily right so all right so that's uh quite easy as you can you guys can see right there that's the hole right there it's very easy to align right and then you can put everything back all right so put the filter back if you have a new one replace it and it's back the top and put the top back on all the four metal secure lock all right so all the four secure metal lock are in place that's the third one and the fourth one and don't forget the rubber that we removed earlier so that's gonna be goes right here so the small part of the rubber is at the bottom this is the grab handle here top just secure it like that all right, so we're gonna tighten this uh, uh, hose clamp. Uh, also, don't forget to connect the connector for the airflow sensor. Right there, you hear the click, and this one here should be just easy. This one here should be just easy. Position the the lock here on the side here should be like that. 
Come on. There you go. It should be good. There you go. It should be good. Alright, so I tightened the hose clamp and then don't forget the this hose here. You just have to put it here to the plastic holder to secure it like that. And of course you have to put this one back and this and then everything that you we have removed earlier. And uh, anyway, it's uh, also a good very good idea to disable the battery while working on your car which I didn't do that because I was um, just comfortable not removing it because I know I'm not gonna remove like lots of connector except this uh, airflow sensor I don't know if that's gonna give me any error later but that's for me to find out okay so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna start the engine on I got my key here and the information that I got from online is like uh, you have to uh, keep it running on idle for 20 minutes and then after 20 minutes you have to turn the AC on to the maximum sorry about the noise lots of like uh, helicopter and uh, you know like airplane passing by as you can see there we are very close to the like a multiple small uh, uh, airport yeah so lots of like uh, uh, small airplanes uh, like uh, you know flying by some of them they are like uh, learning how to fly Anyway, back to this. So, like uh, as I said, like they said, like we have, to, I have to run the engine for 20 minutes on idle, and then after that, uh, I have to turn the AC to maximum for another 10 to 15 minutes. So that and that's gonna be the relearning process of the computer of the vehicle. So again, uh, hopefully this uh, EGR valve will solve my issue. And uh, yeah, so don't forget to hose down whatever the existing coolant under your car. Make sure to clean it so that uh, it will not gonna be uh, hazard to any uh, animals or pets. And because we have removed the uh, hose coolant, so yeah, and this to monitor your coolant as well, temperature and coolant. If you need to, of course, you need to add some coolant later on. And then if you develop a air pocket issue, my friend told me that I can just find, you know, like a slope, you know, like front downwards, like a slope, like a road, and then just. Uh, uh, run the run your uh, run the engine there and then like uh, for like 10 to 20 minutes and and he said that it should get rid of the air pocket and uh, uh, add like uh, as much coolant as uh, possible okay let's uh, fire it up all right so I just uh, making a final check double check just to make sure that all the connector are in place even the connector that you didn't touch but you might accidentally move it so all right so it looks good let's start the engine on all right so my master 5 still starts and uh, as i said i'm gonna monitor the temperature and the coolant I'm going to run it for 20 minutes and, and turn the AC on into the maximum and run it uh, another 10 to 20 minutes. You can see I still have the check engine light on. So it should uh, disappear on its own after like a few miles of driving. But in case it doesn't uh, do that, I'm going to use my code reader here to erase the error codes. And uh, hopefully it won't come back. Uh, you know, like if it comes back it means the problem is not solved as of now I it's kind of like uh, the idol is kind of like different but it, you know like it takes time like it takes like when it's it has to warm up to in order to show that issue the, the really rough idol so I'm it's running for like how many minutes now like seven minutes so far so I'm gonna run it like 20 to 25 minutes and after that I'm gonna turn the AC on into maximum and run it for another 15 minutes and uh, we'll see what uh, will happen
Well guys, so that's concluded installation, replacement of the GR valve on Mazda 5 2006. And if you guys uh, find this video helpful, please don't forget to hit that like button or maybe subscribe. And that's gonna motivate me to make more videos like this. Again, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, but I'm trying to upload like uh, uh, which I think a useful video once a week, you know, like uh, to share with you guys. And uh, yeah, so like uh, thank you for watching guys and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.